Jehova Malak. Ola Malamad. Jehova Malak. Yami Rakis. Jehova Gadol. Makarian Tios. Jehova Yadonai. Jehova Elohim. Kurios Tios Pantakreta. Kurios Tios Pistos. Alda at Jehova. El Emuna Jehova. Ibas Leon Kurios Otios. O Pantakreta. Basileos Basileon Kai Kurios Kurion. Jehova Dabar Halal. Elohim Dabar Halal. Jehova Elohim Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel. Isus Christos. Ton Christon Isun Ton Kurion. Kurion Nimohagion Pantakreta. Gadol Gadol Gebura. Zoan Logan Ogar Tautios. Dulas Desmios and Despotes and Isus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Yehova Ishmal Kam. Yehova Shama. Elnakum Yehova. Elnakum Yapa. Natsak Israel. La Sheker. Gava, Gava. Triambos Yehova. Jesus Christos. Pantakreta. Mora Rosh Nasa. Elohim, Elohim. Numahotios, Numahagion. Pantakreta. Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Derek Emunabakar, Mishvat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling, this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory, we don't deserve it, we don't work for it, neither we earn it. Yet it is the gracious grace of the Lord our God in granting us one more day to understand the marvelous pale wonders of His Word, which if we as scribes compared the tree to be as our pen and world to be the paper, to describe the pale wonders of His creation, of His thoughts, or of His way of manifestation for us the true peace of life even the world would be not enough though every believer will be a scribe and every tree could be a pen to write the great ma pale male wonders of the word of lord because such kind of a miyod male male meant to say great great marvelous things what god the father has designed for us long back in eternity past, revealed for us in Psalms chapter 80 verses 8 through 11 and being exemplifying for us in Hebrews chapter 6 
in verse 1 and 2 not to stick on to the basics but go on to perfection go on to maturity so that we the believers in lord and savior jesus christ shall not fail like the people of israelites but rather giving for us what more he can do for the things pertaining to his wine here he said long back in the book of isaiah chapter 5 verse 4 and now in the church age he further exemplifies for us he has done much more than the most even giving his only begotten son mone gine the only eligible one the only eligible one to be equal with god and to be equal with man out of the old sin nature to reconcile us so that even we after believing in christ giving glory to god in the realm of our life to believe in the lord and savior jesus christ and marching ahead in fulfilling the great palace wonders of his word and his great demands of his word in which we the believers in christ jesus our lord of god should absolutely take up our cross follow him to be worthy of his disciples so he says over here in psalms 137 in verse number 6 let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if i do not remember you if i do not set jerusalem above my highest joy remembering christ and setting now in the church age the word of lord god all the time from the past till to the present to be the only joy for us we have to look and learn the importance of this life through the viewpoint where with god the father before the foundation of the world itself he has chosen us for his good works he writes in ephesians 2:10 and further exemplifying about this great works which we have learned from the book of psalms chapter 80 we need to look and seriously understand that god the father has prepared before the things pertaining to satan in the face of satan that deep roots every believer shall take and every believer shall be casting out the heathen that is every ill kind of thinking worthless kind of thinking from this world and though satan comes up with his strategy to destroy your body through your mind being corrupted into the thinking of the world in the fear of the world and directing your will not to match to the will of god the father we have to wake up to the standards which the word of lord god has been recorded and kept for us in eternity past to understand the great and unique importance of this great and unique life in the church age so that we shall not let go the grace of lord of god in vain glory but rather in return we could walk and work in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost the deeds after salvation with fear and with trembling so dear brethren use the privacy of your priesthood in confession of your sins through rebound and let's learn what christ our lord of god has prepared and kept for us on today's date in eternity past to the praise of his glory because if we are foolish ignorant in understanding the fear of the lord and the work of the lord then we are the men of most miserable that this world can ever know because we are kinaketesis spiritual species of christ called to the highest glory in the fellowship of lord god the holy ghost and thus being given for us such kind of a great life in the church age we cannot end up our life in the silly stupid details of life to be worried but rather we have to march ahead not even just with the basic fundamentals but march ahead for perfection in Christ so dear brethren use the privacy of your priesthood in confession of your sins through rebound understand that lord god is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in biblical truth which we shall continue after this prayer infinitely divine holy father once again coming unto the grace of lord to learn the word which are prepared and kept for us on today's date and eternity past to the praise of your glory to realize and to understand how vast are your thoughts to this man kind on this life at this man being negligent to know your thoughts in this life and to walk according to your demands is absolutely ruined in his way of life 
that, O oh Father, you have come up with grace to give us one more day in our life, to realize and to wake up and to understand the great things which are recorded and kept for us. In the book of Psalms, chapter 80, in verse number 9 through following, to teach, you have bought the best wine out of the Egypt, so that you can cast out the thinking of heathen, and you have planted us so that we could grow further in achieving your work on this earth. I tell Lord, we haven't taken the deep roots, we haven't walked as Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God has walked. Yet you come up with your grace to make our lives to be corrected so that we could walk in your glory. At our Father, many men in the present Christendom, being far away from the Word of God, being negligent from the Word of God, forgetting that this Word of God only is their food to survive on this earth and nothing else than that, at that depending upon the bread of men and not the bread of thy word, which is so important for us, we could sustain and we could walk and we could resemble, we could praise your glory in this earth. Eto Father, many men, they have come to the standards of rotten food to be eaten and they have really sickened up their life without having proper digestion, without having proper meditation on the word of God. Eto Lord, you have given us grace to teach them so that they could assimilate this food and understand what a great life you have given for us to cherish and nourish all the days of our life in the indwelling controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost and to march ahead in doing your work. So Father, as we study the things which are given for us in the church age day by day, your daily prescription portion of manna, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost to enlighten and to challenge us by the message which you have prepared for us on today's date. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. As we were looking yesterday from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, in verse 7, wisdom or the knowledge is what the people who are wise will seek in because they have the fear of the Lord God and thus they assemble their life in the fear of Lord God. They don't want to enjoy the details of life any longer on this earth. But in return, they are occupied in marching ahead in such a way that the real wreath of glory, what he calls over there in Proverbs 1.8, or the adornment that he can put <coughs> or surround upon your neck, the real wreath of glory, he teaches to us that it is the great word of God. In one seven of Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the knowledge. The word knowledge is the earth file which we look upon. The sevenfold of the spirit which we have been learning from the book of Isaiah, wherewith he mentions upon him it shall be such and such spirit. And when he's mentioning the seven things over there, we have learnt and we have understood that the spirit of the Lord God shall rest upon him. And we have come in the reverse order. It has to be taken from the reverse order. As you take the reverse order in Second Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 13 as well, the mathematics over there, after having believed in Christ, you have to reach the virtue. And how we have to reach that virtue is going to give a step-by-step -step procedure over there, which you have to go on for the reverse mathematics. Even the same thing over here. First, he says, the Spirit of the Lord, the Ruach of the Lord, will reside upon him. And then he gives the description of that spirit. The first one he goes on to say in the order of the translation of this Bible, wisdom and then understanding and then counsel and then might and then knowledge and then the fear. But here we have to take the beginning in Proverbs 1, seven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom and the fear there is not the worldly fear. 3.3.7.2 the code mentioned over there is 3374. So having a reverential godly fear so that we are no longer concerned to be on this earth. Though we are in the earth, we are independent of the earth because of call to be Macarian believer. Our supply completely comes from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that each and every believer should walk like the prisoner of Christ now. He is a prisoner of Christ called to be dolas from uh, called to be a desmios from dolas he has to grow up dolas is bond slave prisoner is desmios so our entrance into this great unique dispensation of the church age first of all it begins with 
as a Eusebian believer in the Lord. From there, we become Daulas, that is called to be the born slaves. And from there, we become Desmios, the prisoners for Christ. So since we are the prisoners for Christ, the fear of the Lord God, 3374, meant to say, we are not just the fear of 3373 having in this earth godly fear, but reverential godly fear, trembling at his word, fulfilling his mandates, what are the choke prescription demands of his word, so that we could truly manifest through this life the prescription demands of the word of the Lord of a God. That's what we have been kept alive. That's what we have been made on this earth to be known. Because much of the things in the great manifestation of his word, which we have to assimilate and take day by day, and not just to assimilate and take, but to be a practical way of life. You know, walk in the spirit. We have to walk in the spirit, walk in the truth. We have to be the children of truth. We have to shine forth as light luminaries in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generation so that we could open up our mouth by talking the word of God. In all of these things we have the life to learn that how God the Father has chosen us to witness the things which are good and the best as we look in Philippians 4 verses 8 and 9 which are true, which are honest, which are virtue thinking upon those things and let going the negative aspects of life which God the Father says, I hate them so letting go those things, marching ahead to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, we have to come forward to look our life. So in order to prove that which is good, that which is best, that which has virtue, that which has these things, all these things ought to be proved for us by the word of God. And that now, right now in the church, we have to do it. As long as we have breath in our nostrils. After we die, it's as good as no matter how much you have studied for one year in your academic class and then you're coming for your examination or what have you done in that examination for those three hours, because we have in India three hours of duration to write the exam. Maybe now they might have changed the pattern because of COVID and other things which we do not know. But while we were, it is three hours of examination. So what do you do those three hours? How much you have been writing there. It's not like that. You get back those papers home and you sit and write. What you write in the examination hall, that's the final. If you're able to crack out all the things out of 100 marks, that meant you are well prepared to meet the Lord. If you're not able to look and you cannot, and if, and if you're not able to crack and if you think you can go on with guesswork, even your eternity, whether into the eternal lake of fire or in the heaven, will be a guesswork. So, this three hours, that three hours are nothing but your days of life on this earth. Every breath is your examination. Whether you go on with full confidence that you have been surrounded by the wisdom of God and the grace of God and you're going to walk according to the glory of God, going glory to God the Father alone and making up your life in the will of Lord God, the Holy Ghost that is left to you. But your life will be counted for this preparation of your examination. For one year, what you have done is unnecessary. What you are doing in those three hours is what it has been needed. And this three hours, what you write, will decide your fate, whether you will pass or fail the exam. The same thing, when you let go the silly stupid things of life, as Apostle Paul says, when I was a kid, I spoke like a kid. But when I've grown up, I live of the childish things. You are not entering every breath of your life in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, as those three hours of examination in your life. You're still preparing, as he says, ever learning, but never able to come to the thorough knowledge of God. You're still preparing, but you're not entered every day, every breath, every second, is a serious examination in the sight of God and we are witnessed for that. And how did you do from the day you are born again in Christ and from there on, from the day when you become a disciple to Christ, which we meant to say 3,650 hours of teaching which you have learned from the pulpit of the pastor teacher, then you are called as a Christian. And there you do not stop. From there again you look. It is not just one year of training, but as Apostle Paul says in Acts chapter 20, minimum three years of training. And that three years meant to say minimum roughly 11,000 hours of teaching. 
then we can call you that you have been now ready for your exam. But you know how worthless life you are living? Because every time if you fail to represent God in the examination of a mature adult son in the word of God, as because he says, he wants many sons unto his glory who are adult sons. Not technia. Technia is a discipleship program. From technia, he wants you all to become huyos, adult sons of God. Wherewith they have been adopted in Christ, adult sons of God. We have to grow up into that standards of adult sons. Technia. From technia to huyos. That's what we look in Romans chapter 8, that the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons of God. That should be the right word. Huyos. And that technia, what we look over there, from there you have to grow up into huyos. And as you have been graduating as huyos standards, then your work will begin. So this three hours, what we look as your examination, when you have reached the stage of adult son, then you will understand how important it is that we shall grieve not, Lord God, the Holy Ghost. We shall squelch not, we shall lie not, we shall wax not, but rather with fear and trembling work out the salvation of the Lord of our God, giving God the Father the glory which with he says, if you abide in my word and produce much fruit, John chapter 15, by producing much fruit, God the Father in heaven is glorified on behalf of you. That's the stage you will reach. But now you don't follow first 3,650 hours of teaching. You forget to take three years, that is, into minimum 11,000 hours of training. And how would we expect you that you have already entered into the examination stage? You know, L exam will come in the sense when we have been talking this academic language. Exam is kept after training has been given. For one year you attend the classes. After your one year you are going to get your exam schedules and exam dates. And after thorough training, thorough instruction and giving you thorough preparation on the subject to crack out the things. You are well qualified now to face. If you haven't been trained, if you haven't been given instruction, do you think you can get along into the examination? No, dear brother, we cannot. That's how simple it is with us. Because God the Father in His grace has designed our life in such a way. First He gives grace and then judgment. That's the reason you're breathing still alive on this earth. Is preparing you to enter into that examination mode. In that examination mode, dear brethren, if you would look, we have a passage for us in Hebrews chapter 10, which certainly teaches to us that how well we have to be occupied to be the wine of the law. Seriousness is not been happening for us in this life because we just casually pass out thinking that what is the examination of the Lord. But in return, dear brethren, every believer has to reach this examination in the Lord. You may say that you have passed out your degree or graduation or matriculation, whatever it is. You may say you have done your thesis in PhD. And whatsoever you may say, we require your certificate. And certificate being given by authority. So you may be well qualified, but not having certificate. We cannot think that you have gone through the exam and you are well qualified for it. So we have to have your examination certificate that you have passed in that. You may be brilliant, you may be dull, but your certificate speaks. The same thing over here. We have our examination. Without examination, no believer can be qualified. That's the point. In order to enter into examination from discipleship, you have to become the adult sons. From discipleship, you have to grow up into grammatias. And from grammatias, you have to go and become that which is the will of God the Father, which we read over there 
in the book of Proverbs chapter 1 in verse number 7. In that will of God the Father, we have to graduate every day in the word of God. And yet when we look the end of all perfection, and yet he says your commandments are vast above the end of all perfection. So we have to understand that though we go and make disciples, that's not the end. Though we go and make as grammateers, that's not the end. We have yet more to achieve. That's what we read in Psalms chapter 39. Altogether, the people who are best, even they are vanity. We have made our life to be like a breath of a hand. Though we go on making disciples after graduating, after becoming grammateers, yet he says it is not. You have to come to the you have to come to the stage of conforming to the image of Christ. You have to come to the stage of becoming perfection in Christ. So every believer have has this great purpose. So he says over here in in Hebrews chapter ten. Since we have a great priest, verse number twenty one, over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil consciousness and our bodies washed with pure water. Dear brethren, washing our bodies with pure water is nothing but the examination to be passed. Every breath of your life, Satan has its strategy to destroy your thinking. Satan has its strategy first to see that you don't get feed upon the word of God. Satan has a strategy to destroy your body. Because when you don't feed in the word of God, the spiritual food is not taken. And you know very well, as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. So as we get into this word of God every day, every breath, your renovation of your standards of thinking will transform. So that as Christ our Lord our God says, Do you think that I can do this? Do you have faith? And that blind man said, Help me, thou my unbelief. That means even if you are not able to make up that faith, God the Father will give you that strength to understand what is that faith we need to walk through. And that faith is the word of God, what we have been given today for us. So this faith, what he has given, he says, you live by it, you walk in it. As we look over here in Hebrews 11 after this chapter, the great hall of faith, the heroes of faith. In the same manner, the faith, what God the Father has given unto us, we have to walk in it. And we have to reconstruct back this body because Satan knows to destroy this body as much as it can because you're not able to realize why God has given you this body. He said, your body is not your own. You have been bought up with a great prize. Therefore, take care of your body. The first strategy of Satan to see if you don't get the word of God, you're as good as neglecting your body to the work of God because in the word of God we look the people who search or who give their life to Christ, their life will be saved. The people who don't give their life to Christ, they will be losing their life. And how much more Lord of God says in Matthew 6, Search first my righteousness and my kingdom, then all these things shall be added unto you. How much more he further emphasizes, Who are my brother and sister or father or mother? He says, the one who are the disciples pointing to them who have done the will of God the Father, who listen and do it. These are my brothers and sisters. You know why he says that? Because he knew very well, nothing on this earth, this body could be used better than to fulfill the great desire of God the Father, the rights on approval of the Lord. As Christ is the Lord of a God, when he claimed upon him, this is my beloved son, getting many sons unto his glory, crowned us with glory and honor. God the Father desires through your life and through my life 
the same rotten approval of Christ. Therefore, we are born again, but he has been born in the spirit. We are born again in the spirit. Because we are born in the flesh of the old sin nature, reaching the consciousness of God to understand that the true peace of life, the great peace of life, what we enjoy day by day, purely belongs to God the Father. Through his word, when we walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, that's what we are trying to teach to you, the seriousness of the examination, three hours. Because when you reach that adult son, that maturity, living behind the sin, you know, you'll no longer have pleasure to live a life of the old sin nature. This old sin nature life is absolutely death. It is corruption. Therefore, in Ephesians 6, when he's writing the last verse of that chapter, those who love my Christ sincerely, in other words, those who love my Christ in incorruption, not having corruption, those who love my Christ in sincerely, they, the grace of God be upon them. You know, when you're entering that examination mode, you're no longer interested to taste the details of life, to touch the details of life, because you don't want to grieve Lord God the Holy Ghost by walking contrary to the will of God the Father. You don't want to squelch the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost by walking against the will of God the Father. But in, in return, you would always make a killing or you put to death your will, your volition. And with the free will, as Jesus Christ, our Lord, our God teaches, my meat is to do the will of God the Father at one end. And at the other end, he further teaches to us that. Not my will, O Lord, only thy will be executed. Every believer should reach to that maturity in Christ. When the sons of Zebedee claimed to be kept one on to the right and to the left, and they said, we also can drink the same cup. We also can partake in the same uh, pressure of life, suffering of life. He says, not now, you cannot take this cup. But you... When you're really taking that cup that is really making the will of God the Father to be executed in your life, no matter how odd the circumstances may be, no matter how difficult it might be. So he says, God the Father would give to them to whom it has been prepared. He did not say it will be given for them or for this. When Peter asked, we forsake everything, O Lord, when we are following you, and Lord said, don't worry, you will be having great, you will be given more. All these things, what you forsake, you will be given. Not only in this earth, he says, even in the heaven you will have eternal life. But not say who will sit on the right or the left. That option is still open for you as well. If you are making your breath to be the will of God the Father, if you walk to fulfill that your meat is to execute the thinking of God the Father, rats on approval, then for sure you will be in that realm of a, or a pool, what you say, whether you could sit on the right or to the left. Because we find in Revelation chapter 21 in verse 4, as John the Baptist was being beheaded <coughs> for the pleasing of the dance of the daughter and the king was saddened up. Yet she said, I want the head of John the Baptist right now. And king ordered the same thing we look over there in Revelation 21.4. Those who were beheaded. You know what a great privilege it is for us to be a witness for Jesus Christ, martyr or my, 
Revelation 1, 9. To be a witness for the word of God. To be that great spirit of prophecy for the mind of Christ. And people are not able to understand that if your will is not being taken to the will of God the Father and make up your life completely given to Christ, forsaking everything and following the Lord. You know, this examination is very important for you. If you don't reach your adult stage, you are great Huyos kind of thinking in the Lord, if you don't reach that, if you're not thinking on that, if you're not grown up on that, if you're not reaching that stage, first of all, you're not entering into that examination. Because the word what we find over here in Hebrews chapter 10, let us draw near with a true heart. No longer for us to play the dice. No longer to toss to and fro for every sight of doctrine. Because in Proverbs 1, we look, the fear of the Lord God is the beginning of wisdom. And as we look, the sevenfold of the Spirit mentioned in Isaiah 11 to the first one, the entrance gate is the fear. The second one is the knowledge. And there we don't stop. We have a lot many things to learn in the church age. From there, we become a great mighty man, Gabor. That's what we look in Daniel chapter 3, when Meshach Shadrach Abednego, in verse 24 and 25, when king would look and say, haven't we put three? But there are four. And these were the men appearing. You know, the word men is not Adama or Enosh or Ish. The word there is Gabor. That's what every believer has to come to such great likeness of Christ. Gebor man, here we look upon the Spirit of the Lord. The first one, Yada, knowledge. The first one, fear. 337 for the same code over here again for us. As we look in Proverbs 1 7. From there on, the Spirit of knowledge, the earth. From there on, the Spirit of might, Gebor strength. That means you have erected in your body. The thinking of Christ like a warrior, like an authority. From there on you go to have counsel. And this word we read. The word counsel, yatsa, advice. And this counsel, when we look, it teaches to us that our eye or viewpoint, no matter whatever may be the pressure in life, we took or we take completely upon Christ. We look upon Christ. We take nothing but Christ. We think upon the great and infallible inherent word of God to be our life. And then when you have that etza, you are going to have no bina to build up. Understanding. And when you have this understanding, then you are going to go to have the wisdom, kokma. And that kokma meant to say, you are going to build up a wall of fortification like a scribe. And that will be pumping up in your blood. But becoming scribe, and making disciples, even that is a frail thing. We have to reach the confirmation of the thinking of Christ. We have to come to the image of Christ. Because we have to go on to look greater things and to the perfection of Christ. That's the passage what we find out here for us. In Psalms chapter 80, beginning with verse number 9, as we are looking, he says, You prepared room before us, and you caused us to take deep root, and it filled the land. And does he stop there? No. He says further, The hills were covered with the shadow of it. The word hills is called for us over here. <clears throat> Har, H -A -har. And the word har meant to say, it is a pleasure for us to look every believer is being into the confirmation of the thinking of Christ. Ephesians 4.13 Till all have come to the unity of the knowledge in the Son of God. That's the duty of the pastor teacher which you have to do if you fail it. 
the hill, what we look over here, is not just the hills. The word har in the pictographical representation meant to say, every believer has to have an expression of joy in his face that he has confirmed to the thinking of Christ. When we have in us the thinking of Christ, we are having no fear about Satan. Because we are called to walk like Christ, we have the sperm of Christ, we have been called to confirm to the image of Christ. So in each and everything, the word of Lord God demands that we have to be according to the thinking of Christ in everywhere you go. That's what it is. Christos. Christians you are called. You're called to be like a little Christ. So you're thinking when you walk in the spirit of the sevenfold spirit, beginning with the fear of the Lord to be the wisdom, but fools despise it. And as you grow up, the hills, that means as a people, now today they are working out on the standards of denominations, though the Bible doesn't talk about denominations. And people would say, if he's a Baptist, okay, we like him. If he's a, a Pentecost, some people will like. If he's a Lutheran, some people will like. A Brethren, some people will like. You know, as they look into their crowd, or in the sense, their denominational standards, the way how they will be pleased. So they would say, we are Baptist, we are Lutheranist, we are Pentecost, we are Brethren. In the same manner, here the hills, when they look, every hill is like Christ, Christos. Because he has planted us when we take deep, deep root, preparing a place before Satan or preparing food before enemies, as we look in Psalms 23. He teaches to us the importance that we should be like the hills, the hills being surrounded and smelled by the word of God. In every place we go, the fragrance of Lord's mind. So here, the great thing what we have, the first word he says, the hills. When you have been planted, when you have been taken deep root, when you have been growing up as grammatias, when you have been resembling from grammatias to confirm to the image of Christ as Christos, he says, the hills were covered. And what is that covered? The Greek word, the, the Hebrew word for it is kasa. That meant to say to conceal. You know how they have been concealed. You believe it or not, dear brethren, the pictographical representation says over here. As grammatias, no matter whatever may be the pressure. The grammatias are the scribes. And in Matthew 23, 34, our Lord of God said he's going to send the scribes. He's going to send the wise men. He's going to send the prophets. The prophets of the New Testament, not foretelling, but forthtelling. When every believer would become to understand that he is like a scribe. That's what we find for the great comment of Job of John chapter twenty-one in verse twenty-five. In the treasure of Scripture knowledge, Bas Nage he writes, reading and taking it from the Jewish thought. If every believer is a scribe, every pen could be like a tree, a tree could be like a pen, and every man like a scribe, if they would love to describe the great pallid wonders of his word, the earth and the heaven, if it were like a paper, it cannot hold it. That means they are vast than that. That's the covering. And that's what we look over here. Kassa, to cover. And how does it cover? He says, with the shadow. The what shadow? The shadow of the glorification of the hills. Do you know what is that shadow? Everywhere you go, you will be listening the word of God to say, no matter whatever may be the pressure, make disciples, make disciples, make disciples. That's the shadow of that covering over the hills. The hills are covering with that shadow. The hills, what we look over here, is nothing but a great expression of joy that every believer has conformed to the image of Christ. 
and they're covered up in their mind, no matter whatever may be the pressure, they will be the grammar has grown up, Matthew 13, 52, in fulfilling Matthew 28, 18 through 20, in comparison with Acts chapter 14, verses 21, the work which Apostle Paul has done, and we ought to do now, that's the covering, how? With the shadow. What is the shadow? All the time you look into the shadow, it is no matter whatever may be the pressure in that life, particular day, go and make disciples. Today the churches have forgot in making disciples. They love to quote Revelation 14, 13 when you die. But they never understand the works that follow him. That is apocolotio. Especially as a disciple, what have you done? These are the works that will be given for you after you die. Not the works of your good deeds, what you have done. Not the works of your stupid things, what you think. Even unbelievers can do better works than that. Better than you. Therefore, Job writes over there. If I have failed to look upon the integrity of other, to see that I could give them the gospel. You know, the great description of Job 31. The practical way of life, what he writes over there in Job 28. In coming to Job 31, he describes his life. If I have done such and such, then the shoulder bone, blade of my bone shall be cut it off. He says, I haven't done. I have been all the time to be for them. A help, a guide, a rule. Because he wanted them to become gravity as grown up. He wanted them to become like the disciples of the shadow to be covered up. Today the churches are not the hills like the thinking of Christ or the men of Christ mature in them or the congregation of Christ when Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was. He said, you made my house of prayer into den of thieves. When we look in Revelation 2 and 3, they have made in Smyrna synagogue of Satan. In the same chapter further we look, synagogue of the throne of Satan has been established beside synagogue of Satan. And then Satan has kept the copulation point in producing false men. From the den of thieves, from Kleptes, Lestes, it has become synagogue of Satan to the core. And people today, they are not able to wake up if they should escape the second death, the first warning given in Revelation 2.11. Those who overcome, and they would recognize that this is not the church, this is a synagogue of Satan. Because in the synagogue of Satan, there will be no shadow of making disciples. There will be no covering through the realm of becoming grammateers. You know, the procedure is very simple. You know, from disciples, we are becoming grammateers. From grammateers, our duty is to become like Christos. And the work which Christ our Lord of God has emphasized, getting the great wine, preparing for us room before them, so that we could take deep root and be planted so that we can cast out the thinking of Satan, the heathen, the heavy ill, what we are talking because Natshama, the divine spark, it has to come through the spirit, Ruach, not through the soulish, but yet soul is there till we could believe in Christ and afterwards no longer the power of soul to operate upon our thinking, but it has to be the Holy Ghost controlling your Holy Spirit, your human spirit, sorry. From Holy Spirit, you learn to your human spirit. Your human spirit now transforms or goes on to change the thinking, the facets of your soul, so that now your soul can influence your body. This is very simple what we find. So now as you go on to influence your thinking, according to the word of God, as disciples, if you would join, <clears throat> as disciples, if you would join and grow up into the standards of grammatias, again from grammatias, if you would grow up into the reality of Christos, when you pass through the stage of apostle of teaching, that's a great achievement. And that's not the end. But now you should be alive as we look upon these words of Psalms chapter 80. What is that? The hills are covered with the shadow of it. The hills, expression in every believer upon the face of joy, what they have, that they are now having the thinking of Christ. If Christ of Lord our God be with us, who can be against us?
Greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. We can do great things through Christ our Lord, our God, who strengthens us. So since we have that thinking of Christ, since we have that great pleasure in Christ, since we have our life completely based upon such great life in the word of the Lord, so since we are having the viewpoint of Christ, our life will be like the walk of Christ, as Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, has made it up. That's the hills. And the word next to uses is covering. Since that is there, your constant thought, no matter whatever may be the pressure in this life, you go on to emphasize them to become the grammatiers, not just readers of the word, but writing the word of God. Dear brethren, what for you will use this body on this earth? You might have done many things on this earth through this body. But have you written the word of God? Because Christ our Lord of God said, He is going to send scribes, not the scribes of the time of my Christ, neither the scribes of the time of Exodus, chapter 8, who were with Pharaoh. The scribes, what we have now in the church age, who have learned from the old and new, to get every word of their mouth, not to be like an open specular of venom in your tongues, but the tongue of the learned being the throats of the grace of God in the word of God, being seasoned with salt of God. If the salt could lose its savor, how it could be once again seasoned with? To open up our mouth, we have to examine ourselves. If you are not into coming up into the rank of scribe being sent by the Lord of a God in return going and making disciples of all the nations, your life doesn't have proper representation for which cause God the Father has chosen us, for which cause God the Father has told us to be in his work. And you are going to just waste your life doing many things through this flesh. And some people don't realize till the bones have been broken up. As Job calls over here upon him many curses. If he hasn't done this, let this happen to me. Let this happen to that. You know, those things are fulfilling. You know, yet you're not waking up. You go to your doctor and you look upon all the possible uh, scientific way of investigation. You know, for example, you meet with an accident. So you say, what went wrong? The car went wrong, or the bike went wrong, or the opposite person went wrong. But I will not realize that your account is not clear with Lord. Enough of warning has been given by the Lord of a God so that you should be like the covers. You should be like the standards of grammatias looking upon the time, not just disciples growing up into, but not just disciples, but you have to be grammatias grown up. But you never learn. You need to have your joints perfectly well to have a strength upon your knees to kneel down before the Lord and do the work. But if a knee joint is gone, what you would do now? You know, you don't understand the value or the importance of that particular object in your life till you lose it. After you lose, you think, I would have given my whole body to God. And at other end he says, if your hand is hindering you, if your leg is hindering you, if your eye is hindering you, pluck it off, cut it off, chop it off. Because they are constantly going against the will of God. But that we meant to say the things which are working, which is against the will of God, stop it. Your eyes are looking on adultery, stop it. Your eyes are spending on this earth not to work the will of God, stop it. Because Satan loves to have that strategy to destroy your mind by not feeding in the word of God. You know, you cannot talk that which has not been fed. That's how Satan works out and becomes successful. So what are you doing with your body given to you if you're not growing up into the scribe? Therefore, he says over oh, there in Hebrews 10, Come with a clean heart, with a pure heart. Love the Lord of a God with incorruptible love. Because, he says, when you are not coming or drawing near 
to our Lord our God with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts being sprinkled clean from an evil consciousness and our bodies washed with pure water, pure water, the right standards of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Axiomai standards, not the denominational standards, what this man they are practicing today. They are guessing, but they are not coming to tell you what exactly is in the mind of Christ. They are guessing, they are using guesswork, they haven't been sent by the Lord. If they would be sent by the Lord, the shadow would be all the time to reflect from the hill which covers that shadow. The hill will be the Christos kind of thinking, confirm to it, the image of it. The covering would be grammatias in it. And the shadow would be, no matter whatever from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, the pressures of this life, the shadow would be, go and make disciples, go and make disciples, go and make disciples. Today the church is not emphasizing in making disciples because in return the pastor teacher who is there, he is not a disciple to the word of God. And today the way how the church has been destroyed, deceived, appointing a pastor by giving some trials of sermons, and the pastor personality depending upon, you know, as we find the Judges chapter 70. They want for 10 shekels of silver or one coat. And they want to be buttering up every member of the congregation so that he could be best with them, good with them, so that they could vote for him in the next year. And not exposing the word of God. But all the days of their life exposing with the itching ears to please one another, to encourage one another. And telling that you can find in this area or in this particular surrounding or in this ground the smell of my church name. But not the smell of my Christ, not the sweet fragrance of the word of God spread forth as a knowledge of God. And they say we have to be good to each other, we have to be best to each other, covering and not exposing in the sense, if you regard iniquity in your heart, Lord God will not hear you, says the word. Yet they cover because pastor has not expounded to them. Many of the people do not even understand the context of Psalms 90 or 91, which they teach, 70 or 80 years. And then how he goes on to teach, it is not 70 or 80 years, you die sin unto death. He says you have to be greater than that life, minimum 120 years, like Moses. Because you have to apply your days unto wisdom. You have to live a life unto wisdom. And yet these people don't understand when they will, when they will enter that examination stage. They don't want to enter as Job entered. He said to that woman of his wife, Get thee out, don't talk like a foolish woman, he said. And the reason why he says that is very simple. Because she was exposing in the realm that she said you shall not enter into the examination given by God. The same thing what Peter did to Christ. And when he revealed that he was Christos, he said, God the Father has revealed and such and such suffering he has to go through. Peter rebukes and he says, no. And then Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says, get out, Satan, get thee away, Satan. You're minding on the things of men but you're not minding on the things of God. Today the church ministers are minding on the things of men. And you don't find these people to have in the congregation the discipleship shadow. They don't have that. Just go back and look in their life what they're performing. They don't have the discipleship program any longer. 
They don't consider discipleship program is needed. They don't think that if we as believers in Christ are not growing up into disciples, we are not Christians. The pastor teacher himself doesn't know in Revelation 14, 13, the deeds which follow them are the deeds, the disciples, what you have been there for Christ. How many disciples you have made for Christ. In this great Psalms chapter 80, verses 8 through 10, when we look, it really pricks our heart how much of this heavy ill called to be worthlessness, nothingness thoughts have been filled in the church. How much? Just look. Every day assembly of the word of God, every day who carries his cross and follows me, he's worthy of me, says the word. But today no one is interested in that. The word says disciples are called Christians being trained for more than one year in the word of God. No one is worried today. If you get a new convert, take a photograph of him, change his name, make him to be a Christian, tagging, who can tag him as a Christian? Do you think they're really saved? He just has a bath in a good water, if, it, if ever the water is good. The baptizing work should be done, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, in the realm, when all things commanded by the Lord God, which you have been teaching to them and trusting to them, And then, which they have been entrusted when they're coming with their free will to take that baptism. You know why? Because baptism is good as that. You're going to die like a martyr for Christ. The thinking of Christ has been replaced by the thinking of Antichrist in our pulpits to say that you're taken baptism, your ticket is confirmed, you're reserved. For what? To heaven or to hell? You know, as we look upon that Pharisee scribes, when he woes unto them in Matthew 23, you go for him to be converted from the east to the west, from the north to the south. But when he has been converted, you make him twice the devil you are, he said. Such, such is the process in the church today. Making him to think such and such should be the membership program making him to think you are now ready to partake the elements of the Lord. Though indeed you are ready all the time before taking baptism as well. You cannot survive if you don't have the Lord's figurative elements of flesh and blood. They are going to give you every day the warning to understand you have to catalogio. You have to go on to proclaim the coming the death, the resurrection, the ascension, the session of my Christ. But they're not worried on that. You know how stupid we are living our life in comparison to the word of God. Just look. In translations you may not find the depth of the things, but at least look. Baptizing them when you're taught them all the things. But you just go on to say you're baptized, you're saved. And the pastor thinks, in whichever place you go in this ground, in whichever room you go, it is what the smell of the church will be. It is not the smell of Christ, it is the smell of church, he says. The church of his name. <laughs> Dear brethren, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, be unto be the glory, says the word, because of your kesed, because of your remnant. But we think we are doing great honor to the Lord by being faithful to Him. No. Therefore, He says in Psalms 39, Even the best altogether of vanity to me, they're just frail, they just pass away. Because you are not faithful. If you were faithful, you would cover the hills with the shadow of His mind. Expression in each and every believer would be a confirmed image of Christ. You would cover them, you would make them to use this body to become a gramity as in this lifetime. And today, if you are not writing the word of God, for sure make it dear brethren. We cannot count you to be as Matthew 13.50 to crowd in the heaven. 
because Christ our Lord our God said in Matthew 23:34, he is going to send the scribes he is going to send the wise men he is going to send the prophets he said he didn't say I have sent as he said I will build the church upon this rock he hasn't said I have built it up he says I will build the present tense, I will build. That's what it is happening. The church has been edified. In the same manner, he said in Matthew 23, 34, I will send. Hence, I have sent for you the scribes. And who are the scribes? If you believe or fail to write the word of God. Really, dear brethren, though he has given you the privacy of your priesthood, the work of an ambassadorship, and the duty to say obligation to Christ as a king to write the word of God in comparison to Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 18 what we read. He says in very simple words, in a very simple fact. As a king, you should write the copy of a law. That's katha. The description part, the inscription part, the prescription part. The subscription part. When you have been described, you go to inscribe the word of God. You're going to prescribe that to be your life and you're going to subscribe more to learn about that. Just look, dear brother, and what a great choice of life we have before our hands. Even Dr. Thomas Kempis, when you look of the 13th century, he has written four times the Bible. The teachings of him in the imitation of Christ absolutely brainwashed Vivekananda of this country. And he says, wherever he goes, he has these two books, and much of the teaching was from this imitation of Christ. Though legally he couldn't have held the Bible in his hand, he said. If I were born at the time of my Christ, I would wash his feet with my blood. That means there is no further search of truth. There is no further search of eternal life. There is no further search of peace and joy what we find in Christ. The impact of a scribe. If you read that hardly 100 or 120 pages of book, Imitation of Christ, you would realize what a marvelous teachings we have there. The mind of a scribe. And that's not just for Thomas Kempis, it is for every believer in the church age. It is not the hills of denominations, it is the hills of exegiomai. And in that hill, when we look upon the expression, Every believer should be renovated like Thomas Kempis as a scribe, no matter whatever may be the pressure in life. And the words, what they talk out when they open up their mouth, it has to be all the time making a shadow. And that great shadow, what we have all the time to be thought of, to be made up of. You know, dear brethren, what does it mean to say in that shadow? It simply teaches to us the importance that no matter what you are in the pressure of life on this earth, day by day from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, just get oriented for discipleship program. And in the church age today, if you are not making up your life to the discipleship program, or if your church do not work for the discipleship program, You are not even to the shadow. <laughs> Far less you could think your reality, your church could be taken up at the time of rapture, the member of your churches could be saved. You are not even to the shadow. As I said, we have the shadow of things, but reality is Christ. You don't even have shadow, dear brethren. Because God the Father has chosen the best wine out of the Egypt. God the Father in his grace, he has said he is going to cast out the heathen and he is going to plant in there. 
And God the Father says, No place for devil. Resist the devil, but rather have all the days of your life the thinking of Christ. And you become the hills. Not just grammatious hills, but the hills of Christos. And isn't it a great privilege for us to be as we have been predestined in Christ to conform to the image of Christ. In Ephesians 4, as we have been told, to have the great and unique thinking of my Lord. Isn't it a great privilege? People are so stupid to forget. Which Christ our Lord our God began his ministry among the disciples. He handed over this work to the disciples. Christians may be hardly found three times. Even in Isaiah book, chapter 8, we find, seal the law among their disciples. Teach them the word of God. Three times we find the word Christians in the Bible, but 269 times we find the word disciples, disciples, disciples. And yet these people don't understand. We are not making to give you the greater number of quantity, but telling you the importance. Even at Antioch for the first time, disciples being trained for more than one year, they were called Christians. But today men have changed. The hills are not covered with the thinking of Christ. So that they can have a covering like scribal authority no matter what. The pressure be in this life. So that every believer could be found to tell that he has used his body to write the word of God. Every believer could tell that. You know, people fail to teach that you have to be a scribe because they don't write the word of God first. Since they don't write or don't practice what are the demands of the word of God, so they neglect to teach that. For example, in that Psalms 90, when they say 70 years or 80 years to the maximum filled with all suffering and turmoil, they would love to quote that, but they forgot that is for sinners. The Zakin, the Hebrew school of thought, teaches to us in very simple words. Till to the age of 80, you are not a senior citizen. And in that realm of senior citizen, you are free from sicknesses, ailments, worries, whichever you could think your body can go through, because God the Father has designed this marvelous piece of body, where even the people till date are trying to research, are trying to find out, and what a way the brain could react in the chemical reactions of it. You know, all of these things, man is yet to find out this man. God the Father has given this age to understand, to witness the complete word of God and not to be in the realm of men, to think like men, to go on with the influence of men. As we read one of the advertisements yesterday, earlier they introduced diabetic and they claimed the medicines for diabetic in that great big pharma of that business and now they say the diabetic medicine will not work you have to take this drink the supplement drink you know how much they're fooling around with your brain how much they are trying to deceive your thoughts not to be fixed upon Christ so they think in out of 10 8 people will be diabetic and out of that 8 they say, your medicine will not work if, until you take this drink now. It is like a booster. That's what publicly they advertise in a country like our India, where there are millions of people who would simply follow that advice and they go on. But they don't look upon what great grace God has bestowed upon this flesh. Through his marvelous word of God, because he said, the word is your health. The word is marrow to our bones. The word is the great 
eyesight to our eyes. The word is incorruptible, so when you have the word of God being vaccinated to your body, you will be still burdened to look the glory of God the Father to be paid highest through this body. Not to let go to the silly stupid thoughts of this life. Because we are in the serious examination. We have entered as an adult son of God into that examination center now. And every breath of our life we are constantly looking upon to give glory to God. In everything give thanks to God the Father as he says. And as we look upon in Psalms 150 as he says everything that has breath the breath over there at you look he says having a burden like a mother in her womb to deliver out. Everyone that has a breath let them praise the Lord. So that's what you will become a serious examination in that center. So you get back to take into every thought into captivity for Christ. You make up not to let go the time but rather every breath every breath every breath you are so serious to take it that you would make up your life in the reality of the mind of Christ because the breath that you are breathing is not yours it is the spirit of Jehovah and we have been said if ever you breathe you breathe in the spirit that's the real Greek now the translation all these people would love to talk. And if you are, you are peripatao in the spirit, he says, make sto icon, make a marching order in the spirit. And what a great life we have for us in Christ to enjoy such kind of a marching orders from Jehovah. Because he knows your property is not your own. You have been bought up with a great price. This marvelous body, what God has designed, the fools on this earth cannot understand. For example, average height in India, 5.4, 5.6. And the famous actor Amita Bachchan, who is going to be there in my country, India, is around 6.2. His wife, she's short, she's around 4.6. So how do you compare them to be average? So he cut the legs of Amita Bachchan and put to for his wife so that she can come for now 5.4 5.6 so that you can call this is the average height of Indians that's what stupidly these people they think your BP level should be so much your heartbeat should be so much your diabetic level should be so much and the world has been driven by the fear of this knowledge of men rather than the fear of the knowledge of the Son of God how many miracles we have seen in the Bible. The 12 years woman, for her menstrual sickness, she had faith to touch. According to her faith, she has been healed. The four men getting one lap, one, one a man of this thing, what we look upon that word, we find who has been struck, who is having his hands and legs paralyzed. So they bought him from the housetop. And he was been healed. Jairus' daughter, when she has been dead, they said, "Don't trouble the master because she is dead." He said, "Don't worry, she is not dead; she is sleeping." And these things, what we look, the men can't understand. The mind of men cannot conceive it, because we have been dealing with supernatural, infinite, with the finite mind. If not, you wouldn't have said, preserve your body blameless, your soul and spirit blameless till the day of Christ. When he teaches us those things, he's emphasizing for us the point that we, the believers in the church age, ought to be in the realm of truth. He has breathed into our nostrils the breath of lives, what we call which is the spirit of Jehovah. 
the man lives by the word of God, by the breath of God. Therefore, we find the word God breathed, Theonustas. And that is all scripture. Since it has been God breathed, that breathing which happens in our nostrils can transform this body completely. The glory which he has shown through Peter, James and John when he has found, shown it on the Mount of Transfiguration through Moses and Elijah, he said, don't tell this to anyone. That transformation today through the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, which is so great, given unto our lives to control us, to lead us and to mentor us. We are just trampling it out by looking the viewpoint of man. And though the scripture says in Colossians 3, if you have been risen with Christ, seek those things that are above. <laughs> we seldom care about to look the things that are above. Though the scripture says, put to death necrosate, the deeds of the flesh. We seldom care about to put to death the deeds of the flesh. Though the word says, every day renovate the standards of your thinking, go back for metamorphoma in Christ. We seldom care about that. We are not even worried. The things which we are going through is absolutely vain and vague, says the word of God. Yet, we love to cherish and nourish by robbing the time of God, 2 hours, 40 minutes every day, and giving it to your mobile phones. And if needed, you look to have a power bank. If needed, you will take unlimited data. But you will not let go your smartphone at the cost of robbing the time of my Lord, which belongs to him. Don't worry, dear brethren, as you sow that you will reap. If you are not becoming the hill to cover with the shadow, the hill, a great pleasure of joy when we look in the face of a fellow man called to be brother in the Lord, as we call brethren in Christ, born to one womb of a mother through one sperm of Christ. As it is good for each and every one of us to lay down our life for Christ. As Christ our Lord our God laid down his life, so we are to lay down our life for our brethren, to train them up, to lead them up, to graduate them up. As it is good for us, as it is best for us, as the word says, we don't look that expression of joy in the fellow man because they forgot to look what are the demands of the word of the Lord and they have come being not sent by God the Father as he said in Jeremiah 23, 18 through 22. I haven't sent them at their end. If they were to be sent by me, they would have taught you to learn the counsel of the Lord. <laughs> they would make you to stand firm in my word. So we find our fellow brethren no joy because they are not grown-up scribes. Hardly they could read the Bible in their entire life in the energy given to that flesh. Because you know, dear brethren, the life that you are living by rejecting the word of God to reign in it, to have a process in it, it is as good as to teach to you that the capacity of this body is something different. And goes on to be, for example, if you have the think, the thinking, the things pertaining to your heart nerves or your intestine, what you have been first coated up with this glucotin, what you say. You know how much resistance it goes on to resist. Now some of the men, they are going to tell for you in the YouTube, you are going to find them out. So these people, they teach that the resistance, what your body is resisting, is really greater than what it would be the original size. It would be so big, it would be so fat. As the days goes on, goes on, goes on, they become gradually thin and get blocked up. The first surface in your stomach being coated to your intestine, as you go on to consume it again and again, it's going to get first like a paste over there. So first the things, they say emphasizing the food upon the fibers, it is going to wash off all those things and it's going to make a clean tract, clear tract. 
you know why these things we talk about the same thing the way of your life that you're living by resisting the grace of god to become the will of god to become the work of god to grow up into gramity as joining as disciples as your body is resisting as it was earlier such a great thing and now it has become so much so you are day by day resistance you are grieving lord god the holy ghost you are making a resistance to the call of lord god the holy ghost to come back and learn the word of god day by day as you go on at the end of your life you are thinking that you can give some time to god but the remaining time you are going on to resist the truth therefore you fail to learn to become grammatias in christ and if you fail to become grammatias in christ matthew 13:52 teaches in very simple words joined as a disciple growing up into grammatias conforming to the standards of the household master and from the old and new getting something new to christ you're really failing it out He has taught them the six parables in Matthew 30. Now he says, if you have comprehended them, they say yes. Then he said, I will tell you the seventh one. What will be the kingdom of heaven? If you are not grammatious, the hills cannot enjoy. That's the point. What I want to tell the hills being now the Christos, having in each and every believer the expression of joy that Christ is formed in them, fulfilling Galatians 4:19. fulfilling efficiency for love and through 13 under the pastor teacher work fulfilling romans 8 28 through 32 predestination in christ these are the hills category of the people in christ these are the men who have grown up in christ these are the things which the word of lord god demands in christ and yet today we are not able to understand that how much god the father has designed us to be in the lord and how much we are really neglecting to be in the lord the hills shall cover and the word cover what we find over here is that it is been filled up with scribes no matter whatever may be the pressure in life and today dear brethren if you haven't taken a decision to write the word of god at least once in your entire life if you would write in the internet it would be great to look every hebrew thought every greek thought on that and learn and become conforming to the image of christ that's what christ of lord of god wants us to go on for perfection not to still put upon the foundations of basic things but go on to perfection as we read that in second corinthians 6:14 through 7:1 what is that perfection living off this silly stupid way of life here also we can have a passage in psalms 139 as we are reading uh, sorry hebrews 10 when we are reading this verse it says in verse 22 drawing near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil consciousness and our bodies washed with pure water he says let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not neglecting to meet together as it is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing nigh and then he says for if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries we think we can willfully sin against after receiving the knowledge of god that is what today the christendom is trying to reign if you are not thoroughly purging no matter whatever it is if you are not becoming a scribe dear brethren into the kingdom of heaven it's not possible because you are not able to look upon the shadow of it as we find over there no matter whatever may be the pressure you have to be making disciples so covering if it is been with scribes shadow will be with disciples if you are having that object 
You know, the first order we go from disciples into grammatias, grammatias into Christos. The practical way of life, being in the mind of Christ as Christos, having a cover, as to say, undercover arm, like scribe you are, the shadow of it being the head, that is called the things pertaining to be that great hill, the shadow of that hill, or will be in your life, as an expression that you go on to make disciples and nothing else than that. And do you think he stops over here? He talks now about the bows. The word bows, what we call in the Hebrew, is called to be branch, a nap. So here, a nap meant to say that your viewpoint of life your vigor and valor of life, your mouth when you open up in life, they will be like the ornaments of wisdom around your throat or around your neck. So here the branch, he says, thereof are goodly. The word goodly is L. The four, strong code number for it is 410. As we look upon Isaiah chapter 9, as we look, mighty God, the word mighty over there is in the realm of men because it's going to come in the form of flesh. L410, the same code. And to whom the word of Lord God came, he said they're going to be gods. Scriptures cannot be broken. So what will happen when you take in the word of God? You're directing them the fate. That's what the uh, devil, when it looked upon Paul and Barnabas, said, These are the way showing men to heaven. It witnessed them. And the people over there in the book of Acts, they thought these are gods, but they said, We are men like same passions. But they will look the importance God, 410, saying that in the Aleph energy of your life, you have, you are a disciple. So, the branches will be like the Aleph energy of the Lord God as disciples, known as Sedars. And do you know what is the word Sedar? It meant to say for us over here in the Hebrew, Erez, E-R-E-Z. And Erez meant to say, they have their head renovated like Christ. And yet they come every day to dig and take the deep things of God more and more. Exceedingly, abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. Erase, sedars, these are the trees. So that they can be woven together in the thinking of Christ and they could be the great sedars of his word on this earth. So dear brethren, he says, the branches thereof, that meant to say since we are the true vine. And Christ was our Lord of our God states over there in John chapter 15, which we have read, we are the branches. We need to look over here. We have to be the branches of goodly one. And that branch, what he has put over here, teaches to us that they are like sedars. They are put woven together. What they do? They just don't stop. If they are renovated the standard to think and to meet the working of Christ or the thinking of Christ, they just don't stop there. So what they do? They go on to still dig and take every day the word of God. That's the great truth what we have over here for us. Sedars are the word. Though the people may think the trees of it are like the things pertaining to the Sedars of Lebanon which he has planted or whatever may be the tree description we are not worried but the word of word of God says these are the Sedars of God and what are the Sedars of God that meant to say these are majestic and they will be as a great revolution to this people so dear brethren looking into the context from verse number 8 of Psalms chapter 80 to review God the Father in his, great, in his grace has bought us a wine out of Egypt. 
He has casted out the heathen. No place for every ill kind of thinking. No place for the soulish kind of thinking. And he has planted us. He has planted us by preparing before Satan and causing us to take deep root. And he has filled the land. You know, that's what your growth has to be. The word filled is called to be male. That meant to say your blood all the time should be in the process of making disciples unto Christ. And now coming to verse number 10, the hills. When you have been planted, taken deep root, when you have been in the reality that God the Father has prepared for us food before the enemy on this earth. When you have taken the deep root, you will call to become like a hill. And that we meant to say, conforming to the thinking of Christ. And that hill will cover no matter what. The covering of you is like a scribe. You have taken the pressure. No matter whatever may be the pressure in life, you gave your time to write the word of God. That's the word what we call covering. You have used this body to the work of God. That's called to be the covering. And today people don't understand that why they have been given this body. They are well aware to take care of this body in the realm to be free from corona sickness or any other sickness by having to do that which is good, they think. But the covering which God the Father has given or concealed why God the Father has given this flesh is to see that you conceal in your body as a scribe. You have a witness or a testimony that you have used your body like a scribe. And we illustrated Thomas Kempfus, the man how he influenced Swami Vivekananda. So covering like a scribe. Because we have been told to open up our mouth as divine oracles. We cannot open up our mouth as divine oracles until and unless our covering is like a scribe. Therefore in Proverbs 1.8 we have this verse which says for us, My son, hear the instruction of the father, and forsake not the Torah of thy mother. He says, For they shall be ornament of grace around thy head. You know, the word ornament, what we look over here, it meant to say, as livya, L-I-V-Y-A-H, wreath. And the word wreath meant to say, as disciple you have grown up, no matter whatever may be the strength of that hand, or in the strength of that work of this world, as disciple, that is, will be like a wreath, you have grown up, that is what, like a disciple, you have been there. And that discipleship is of grace, and that's called to be shun. Because you have took a firm decision. You have built up a wall of fortification, no matter whatever may be. You have used your vigor and valor in that firm decision in making Christ to be number one in your life. That discipleship is mentioning. Since you have taken that wreath of grace, that discipleship orientation in the yod energy of your life, he says that is of grace. That is what you have built up a wall of fortification and you have put that to be your vigor and valor no matter what. So that's the wreath of grace, he says. And this wreath of grace, he further goes to teach, upon thy head. And what is that head? Rosh. You know who is that of the family? The head which is thinking according to the standards of the wreath of grace, the standards of the discipleship program, the standards according to be like the great grammatias in Christ. Such is the head. And as we look, Christ our Lord our God is the head of the church. And for Christ our Lord our God, the head is God the Father in heaven, Yehovah Elohim. And for every believer, male believer, the head is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And for every female, the head is a husband, own husband, to use the word specifically. So that a husband could train her wife. 
So here we look, wreath of grace, as discipleship oriented you are, and in that grace of the Lord of a God, which you have been using, it will be all the time that you have built a wall of fortification called to be the Shen. You have built up the standards of the great vigor and valor in your life. So it will be the wreath of grace around your head. Head is what you think according to the demands of the word of God. So when you look upon the instructions given by the word of God, the fear of the Lord, the sevenfold ministry, what we look, it always gives you to have this great fear. Because your head will be the wreath of grace and chains, you know the word called to be, around your neck which you encompass, as we say, necklace, anak. And here we read the word anak, which is called your viewpoint in the vigor and valor of your life. From the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, necklace. So what will be? He says, this chains about thy neck. The word neck, dear brethren, is called in simple way as the throat. And the word throat, called to be in the Hebrew, gar garot. It meant to say, you have erected in your structure according to the thinking of Christ renovated standards of Christ. That's the word what we find gara. So now we look the word which says throat which is making you all to have the standards of erected structure in your head and your throat is already been now with the great word of God inculcated in it. So it says, like a chain, like a necklace, you have all the time kept your eye in the viewpoint of the word of God. All the time you have made a vigor and valor to be according to the standards of the word of God. No matter from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun, you have put the word of God. So now you open up your mouth or your throat according to the standards of the word of God. So now dear brethren, coming back over here for the word cover, you know, first of all he says, the wreath of grace around your head, that meant to say what oriented with the discipleship program of the word of God, and around your neck, you have been, or the throat you have been, with the great necklace of the word of God. So now you're covering, since you have made it up as a scribe in the word of God, you have no fear to be mentioned. You have no details of life to be worried. And what is that? Since you have grown up into the standards of a scribe, like a covering, the hills will have the shadow of making disciples of all the nations. But in reality today you are not even having the fear of discipleship. And the greater the way you people are been walking in this light without making disciples to Christ. The church is being all the time constantly inculcating according to the standards of the fear of men, the demands of men. And not and never worried about to look upon the thinking of Christ. First of all, there are no hills. Not every believer conformed to the image of Christ or the thinking of Christ. Though they have been predestined to come back to the thinking of Christ and to fulfill and do the will of God the Father to be our life, to be our bread. And to show the great good pleasure of God the Father in our life. First of all, no hills. If you want to become a hill, you have to have a cover, cover like a scribe. That's the root as disciples into grammatias, grammatias into Christos. That's what we explained for you long back. 
Now here we look the hills, Christos, after becoming Christos, what is our work? The practical way of life which we need to emphasize now. From the Christos, under the cover of the shadow, when you're having your head with the wreath of grace, when your neck with the ornament of becoming, day by day, renovating from the rising of the sun till the going down of the sun, to look into the viewpoint of the vigor and valor of the word of God, and opening up our mouth, as the throat, what we look in necklace, directed structure according to the thinking of Christ in your body. Whenever you open up your mouth, that's what we look in First Peter 4, 11, open up your mouth to the thinking of Christ. Colossians 4, 6, seasoned with grace. Because every Argatha's word which you speak, he says in Matthew, it shall be brought into judgment. The word which did not produce in them the character of Christ will be brought into judgment. The great things what God the Father has designed and kept for us, if we don't meet, if we don't look, if we don't achieve the standards of the Word of God. For sure, dear brethren, your throat has been like an open speculum, venom filled in it. And some Christian men will look, they are like the idol's throat. Though they have eyes, they cannot look. Though they have ears, they cannot, they cannot hear. Though they have mouth, they cannot open up. Though they have throats, they cannot make up their mouth to talk. Though they have hands, they cannot work the works of the Lord. Though they have legs, no idols. The throats which have to be the word of Lord God has become now. In simple words, the throats of Satan. Where can you have necklace around your throats? Where can you show that you are having in you the viewpoint in the vigor and valor of your life from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun to be the word of God? Where are you having that? Is there anything which you can think it's far better for you? And how will the hills cover the shadow? When you are not confirmed to Christos image, Though we have been given the power of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to conform to the Christos image, when you are not able to walk like a scribe, if ever there is a scribe, you look upon wreath of grace around his head, you will find his mouth or neck covered with necklace. The standards of this wreath of grace around his head or the standards of necklace around his neck. That meant to say, day by day graduating more and more in the discipleship work, day by day graduating to look and to understand how many churches they are gone out of the way of the plan of God, how much they have been devoured, how much they have been destroyed. And as a viewpoint of a scribe, we can look that. But the way today the churches are moving in and around the world, if you would look, even the client nation USA, they're not sending in making disciples to all the nations, being properly trained in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. And today, if ever you look in the standards of this pulpit teaching in that word, what they go on through the denominational standards, buttering the people, how they have to impress the flock, how they have to do this, how they have to do that, how they have to be good to each other. How they have to live a life which is going to give them bread and butter. Dear brethren, how will the hills cover the shadow? How will the branches will become cedars of God? Though God the Father in eternity past, He said in Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, He has chosen us before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless. Dear brethren, anything of a work in a particular place, if it has been left under, we have a conscious not clear towards that and we could say how we could live that place till that work could be done. 
For example, we have traveled from one place to another and we know our work is not done there yet. We cannot let go that work half done and let the place go like that. Till that work could be done, our conscious is not clear to leave that place. How much more work of heaven in Christ to make the hills like Christ under the cover of scribes to have a shadow of making no matter whatever may be the pressure in this life disciples to Christ. Your program first as Tekna believers in John 1.12 born again in Christ taking up your cross every day following my Christ to grow up into grammatias which is called for us to write the word of God and daily learning the word of God to be saying that we are free from the counsel which could be upon your own blood we are free from it and you are going now to grow up into Christos and when you have reached that maturity confirming to the image of Christ to the thinking of Christ that's one end that's one, two, three step map and now from that three the practical way of life which we need to apply. From disciples you came to Grammatias. From Grammatias you reached Christos, passing down the stage of Apostolas as well. We read that. Now the hill is Christos. The covering is Grammatias, called to be the scribes. And disciples is the shadow. And when they are making up our life from Christos, the hills to be expressed of a joy that every believer is like Christos. And we look under the covering, no matter whatever may be the pressure in their life, they are having grammatias as the preparation period. And thus they cover the shadow of making disciples of all the nations. And the branches, that is what John 15, 1 through 8, the branches being purged thoroughly day by day in the word of God will be like godly sedars. And what is that godly? Carrying their yoke to do the will of God. And sedar is the majestic honor of the tree of God as the Hebrews look into it. It's a great majestic, and that's great majestic is what our royalty, as he said, the food shall not be given to dogs. That great majestic food, what we share today, what we enjoy today, what we look today, and such kind of a great majesty of food which God the Father has designed for us in the church age, we shall be counted as godly sedar or sedar of God. And if we yet neglect to carry our cross every day to come to learn the fear of the Lord God, as we read over there in Isaiah 11, that fear is the beginning of knowledge. That knowledge will make you to have Gebor kind of man. That Gebor kind of man will make you to become Etsa, called to be the council. And from council you will have understanding Binna. And from understanding you will have Kokma, the wisdom. And when this six things are there, then ultimately the spirit of Jehovah, the Ruach of Lord God of hosts, abide upon you. So coming to a place, work left undone, not having a conscious clear to leave that place. How many of them, they're dying sin unto death. Coming into this pilgrimage trip in the grace of God, and not having the work done to be like the hills which cover the shadow. And the hills which cover the shadow. In return to grow up to become like the branches of the Seder of God. And that dear brethren, God the Father in His grace gives you one more chance to understand Hebrews 10. He teaches to us the importance that we have to come to God with a clear conscience. 
and not make up our lives in the reality of lies any longer. Because willingly if we would sin, willingly if we would make the standards of this life to sin again, he says, we no longer have a sacrifice for sin, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Why we want to be enemies of God when he has called to be the friend of God. Enemies of God is going to consume you out because you haven't grown up to the will of God. Friends of God, every branch cleansing itself he no longer called us to be his servants or slaves. He calls us to be his friends, philos, John 15, 14. And that's gone to perform the commandments of God. To make the cover of his shadow to be manifested on this earth. Into the great reality of the mind of Christ. Into the great reality of the thinking of Christ into the great reality of this life which has designed for us in Christ and why we shall live a life that which is absolutely wrong and not making our life to be the will of God. Dear brethren, how simple God the Father has designed us to move on to perfection day by day. Even the best in the sight of the Lord of a God is frail, is vanity. If we would just go to make disciples, it's vanity. Make them thoroughly conform to the image of Christ. That should be your hill. That should be our denomination today, not the denominations which you have named for yourselves. The denomination of Christos, because Christ our Lord our God being the head of the church. And yet, dear brethren, the church has forgot to become the hill of the cover of his shadow. The church has failed to become the branch of godly Siddhar. Dear brethren, think over these issues. As disciples into Grammatias, as Grammatias into Christos, having reached that stage of maturity, putting into practical way of life under the cover of Grammatias, directing our work from the standards of Christos. It is no longer we who live, but Christ who liveth in us. It is no longer what we think, it is Christ thinking in us. It is no longer what we desire, it is Christ's will that we desire. It is God the Father, good pleasure. We are here to live and to perform His will. When we are entering into such examination in Christ, day by day, and when we are making up our life according to the standards of such thinking, it is no longer we, but it is Christ. So when we have that viewpoint of operation in our head, we would first daily graduate and not to rebel against the word of God, Isaiah 54 through 7. We would make up our tongue to be the tongue of the learned, having our neck ornamented with the necklace, having our head with the wreath of grace, you know, every day we're enjoying the wreath of grace. If not, we would be dead long by. The reason why he gives that wreath of grace, the reason why he has to give us this life, is to become the hill, a part in that hill, in the cover of the shadowing of the word, to become the branch of the sedar tree. And dear, dear brethren, how many days more you want to be prisoner to the world and not prisoner to the Word of God. If you are not started to write the Word of God, wake up. Because scribes are the people who write the Word of God. 
Scribes are the people who make up their life to be the word of God. Because these scribes, when they are writing the word of God, they would understand each and every word of the Lord God, how marvelous he has penned it and kept for us. And that men in search of futile wisdom of this earth, <laughs> believing the lies of men, though the word says, what men can do, if God be for us, what men can do against us? He uses the word twice in the same Psalms 80. He teaches to us the importance that we shall not let go this grace of God to vain glory. What man can do? What flesh can do? Who is our enemy if Christ be, if Christ be with us? The enemies will fail. The evil will fail. The foes will fail. Being put together, all the flesh will fail. <laughs> so why do you want to still reside in the thinking of men? And go haphazardous. You know, when Moses died, his eyesight was not dimmed, neither his vigor and valor, a bit of his flesh did not be lessened up, or it was reduced. It was the same. If you walk the right fuel to the right vehicle, and the right fuel is the word of God for this vehicle in the Lord's plan, it will be a great privilege for us to walk breath by breath, performing the will of God. And as we cannot leave the place the work have done, we cannot let go the grace of Lord God on this earth, by simply putting, we have fought a good fight, we have guarded the doctrine, we did the work of the Lord. But in reality, when you have been the hill, when you have graduated to become the hill of his covering under his shadow, and if you have really become the great branch of the cedar of God, then you will truly understand what a marvelous work God the Father has designed and what a marvelous work He has executed through us. And then you can say at the end of your life, we have fought the good fight to the praise of His glory in His grace. So dear brethren, He has called us to be the friends of God. Where do you want to end up your life? Like the enemies of God. Think over these issues. Willfully, if you sin, no more sacrifice except to face terrible judgment of Second Thessalonians 1, 8 and 9. Do not waste the grace of Lord God in vain glory. Use the privacy of your priesthood through a rebound and make up your life breath by breath, moment by moment. If ever you breathe, the breathing you breathe has to be Lord God the Holy Ghost. And the life which he has designed is everlasting life. And since you people don't understand the importance between Zoe and Bios, you are executing this life under Bios to think that is Zoe. But in reality, it is not Zoe, but still the biological life that you are living. Because you haven't taken up your life to work the demands of the word of the Lord by executing the great unique spiritual life ever designed and given for man in this entire ages, in this history of mankind. So wake up to live a true life, spiritual life, Eusebian way of life, the Zoe kind of life, and become the hill, and under that hill have the cover of shadow, so that you could be called the branch which has produced much fruit day by day, cleansing out, and have become a majestic man, a man of great renown and honor, in producing much more fruit to God the Father and glorifying Him. The branch of Sedar God. Think over these issues. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us, to the praise of his glory.
in his clothes. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself you shall have his eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, by which you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to carry so thon lagan. Herald the word in season out of season, because the diamond to my witnesses where they have been called. The number one diamond to my witnesses in Wellington Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond to my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. <laughs> And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. But remember, every breath of your life, it is a viewpoint to be in the standards and to the teaching of the word of the Lord of our God, which is called for us to be in the reality of examination breath by breath as we walk into this examination as adult sons redeeming the time purchasing the time and becoming the hill and looking our life the viewpoint of hill making up our life in the viewpoint of that great hill of the word of god and making up our standards to be the cover of his shadow the branch of his great godly siddhar. As the branch without Christ, it cannot produce fruit. So we are without abiding in the teaching of Christ. We cannot produce the desire of the Lord. So dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us to the praise of his glory in his grace. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O oh Lord, to learn the passage of Psalms chapter 80, verses 8 through 10. Father, in every really past you have chosen us to be the wine, calling us to cast out the teachings of heathen, that is, every ill, worthless things, and to plant in the word of God, for which cause you have prepared a room for us before this angelic conflict, taking deep roots and to fill the land, so that we could be the hill of the great joy of yours, confirming to the image of Christ as a cover under the scribe to be making the shadow of it make known in making constant disciples and a branch of your seder of God in making the world to realize <coughs> that as we follow Christ we have been given this great privilege to be the majestic sons of Christ so father as we go to study the things pertaining to this word and the things which have thought for us in this message we pray every believer to be a true true Eusebian one using his body to become a scribe and not to waste in the worldly lusts of this flesh so that as disciples they could grow up into the adult sons of Christ and as adult sons of Christ they could grow up in becoming the great Christos confirming to your image and making up our life according to the standards of your truth so father we are thankful for this privilege we are thankful for each and everything which you have done for us to pray in grace Help us, O Lord, in each and every exam moment of us to glorify you to the maximum so that we could be sent percent men of you on this earth and not partial men, so that we could be not ashamed when we stand in the presence, but rather we could say, Lord, like unprofitable slaves, that which is our duty to be done, we have to do it, we have done it. To this section, Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Ghost, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's matchless, pure, as gracious name, we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name, we ask sovereign Lord.